Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for Weekly Poker Hand. This is the fifth episode, the fifth week of the series. And today we're looking at a heads-up hand. Uh, this is at a final table. I'm honestly not sure the stakes or the event that this is from, but I saw this hand history and I thought that it is a pretty cool spot where our hero, sitting here with 5-4, really messes up his hand. And I will discuss where he messed up throughout. Right here, the button raises. Whenever you're playing heads up, you can expect the button to raise a huge amount of the time. And this is, you know, a pretty standard thing because he's going to be in position throughout the entire hand. And whenever you're playing out of position heads up, you want to play very tight because you're going to be out of position. And whenever you have a hand like 5-4, you are basically always going to be better off if you just fold this hand. There's really no reason to play it. A lot of people say, well, it's connected, we're heads up. So I'm going to take a flop, and that's just bad logic. I actually think you're a lot better off 3-betting here or folding. 3-betting would be just as a stone bluff, and I usually don't like stone bluffs, so I think you're best off folding here. However, I, our hero decides to call, which isn't necessarily that bad, but you're just going to get yourself into trouble. And right here, the, way, the way, reason a lot of people use to defend their call is that they're saying, well, I'm getting 3 to 1, and every hand is at least 25% to win. And while that is true, you're going to find that what happens here is the pots that you win tend to be very small, and the pots that you lose are going to tend to be larger, simply because you're out of position. If you want a full discussion on position, you can check out my book. It's called Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. Volume 1 has an extensive section on position and why, why it is so important. So, we get middle pair, which is usually a pretty good hand heads up. We check the villain bets, and right here, I think the best play is to probably shove, as in go all in. Uh, right now, there's 30,000 chips in the pot, and if we can pick that up, that's fantastic. Obviously, if our opponent has a queen, he's never going to fold. But that's really the only hand we're too concerned with. If he has something like pocket sixes, he may assume we have a queen and find a fold. Which, of course, we really shouldn't have a queen here too often, but... I mean, a queen is certainly in our range, but check shoving it would not be a standard line with a queen. But, you know, it, these random state games, this is probably like from a $50 or $20 tournament, something like that. Um, guys do funny stuff. So, you know, if you check shove here, your opponent could easily fold out pocket sixes, which would be a huge success for us. However, the hero does elect to call. Uh, calling's much better than folding. Heads up, you really shouldn't be folding too many pairs on the flop, ever. And we turn basically the nut card, which is great. We check the villain bets. I like a check here. I think leading here would be pretty bad, because unless our opponent had a queen, or maybe one of those middle pocket pairs, he's almost certainly going to fold. So, uh, checking is good. So now I have to decide if we should check shove or check call. Obviously, if the villain checked it back on the turn, we would value bet the river. So right here... I think check calling is fine as long as you plan on checking the river, and I think check shoving is fine if you think this player will not value bet or continue bluffing. So whenever you're playing against an opponent, you always need to figure out what they're doing wrong and what you can do to exploit it. And obviously I have no clue about how the villain plays, but if the villain is the type of player that is very willing to raise, I don't know, 9-8 and then just bet three streets, then you should certainly check call here with the intention of checking the river. If the villain is a type of player that's going to check back a lot of rivers with a very wide range, particularly hands like, say, queen-10 or queen-9, if he's going to check those hands back, we're much better off check-shoving here. So, it's a pretty player-dependent play, and I could go either way. We check call, which is fine. And right here is where the hero really messes up. When the hero sh uh, donk shoves here, this is called a donk shove, because whenever you shove into the preflop razor... It's almost always a fairly strong hand. And what happens here is that most players are going to fold out all hands except for very strong hands. And whenever the 7 comes, interestingly enough, this is a pretty bad card for 5-4 because we now lose to 5-6, which is certainly in this player's range. We also lose to pocket 7s. And if he does happen to have pocket 5s or 6s, he's going to fold for sure. And if he has something like 8s, 9s, 10s, or jacks, he's probably going to fold those as well. So when we shove here, the only hands we're really going to get value from are probably good queens, like maybe queen jack or king queen or better, pocket aces, pocket kings, and then hands that beat us. Because if he has a four, he beats us as well. So 
when we shove here, we're forcing our opponent to play optimally. And anytime you make a bet that makes your opponent play optimally, it is almost certainly a mistake. And that's something you should really think about throughout your entire poker career. And every time you're making a bet, like, is this play going to make my opponent play well? And if the answer is yes, then you probably should take a different line. So we do shove here, and our opponent does happen to look us up, and he does have probably right near the bottom of his calling range. And I think that's a pretty unfortunate spot for him. And I will talk about how I would play his hand in the next part of this uh, podcast. So, it's a pretty cool hand, and I think there's a very big lesson to learn there. This has been Jonathan Little for Weekly Poker Hand. Thanks for watching.